<laughs> just watch me today. Yeah. That's basically what you will do. Yeah. And since I did it. Well, I said it right. For next week when I'm gone. And just watch me today. That's basically what you will do. Yeah. And since I did it. As you did it. Just to make sure you exit out, you will keep us unmuted.
just click on the screen over there. Yeah, you have to put it here, right here. And Chang 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 Chang
오난 방울을 찾아 오난의 창조의 이상 이상의 천국과 신상의 천국을 창조할 것을 맹세하나이 이 천국 주인 우리 바라고 참 사람을 중심받고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천국의 백교적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 모다 국가에서는 충신 세계에서는 섬 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이 삼 천일국 주인 우리 가정 참 사랑을 중심하고 사대 심정권과 삼대 왕권과 왕족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이 사 천일국 주인 우리 가정 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조 이상이 천주국의 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 공일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 오, 천일국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 매일 실체적 현상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 공일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진할 것을 맹세하나이 6. 천일국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이 7. 천일국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 오늘의 열풍과 연결된 무리한 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이 8. 천일국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 천일국 시대를 맞이하여 절대신앙, 절대사랑, 절대복종 신인의 일세 이상을 이루어 지상천국과 현황지천국의 해방권과 속방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 가정맹세 1. 전일국 Let us take these three minutes to offer three uh, points of gratitude to begin your prayer. Thank you. 
about seeing a victory that God has already won the battle and that although there may be um, this, this war against good and evil that God is going to reign and God is going to win this victory and we will see the kingdom of heaven here on earth so yes I know this is a new song but we can sing it together um, so please join uh, in singing this song. The loser can surprise and stand. Yes, 
for evil, and you turn it for good. One more time, and you turn it for good. Keep repeating that. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. One more time, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. One more time. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. Jason, and I'm Kelly, and we built our Timber Tech deck. There's a question if we were able to do this ourselves. Oh, shit. 
So this is titled, A Model for the Ideal Family and World Peace. So this speech was given at the founding assembly of the Women's Federation for Peace in Asia, held on September 17, 1991 at the Tokyo Bay Hotel in Tokyo, Japan. It reads, Distinguished Presidents of the Rally, Members of the Women Federation for Peace in Asia, and my fellow women leaders who have gathered here from all parts of Japan. Today, we stand at a turning point on the road, marking great and historic changes. I offer my heartfelt congratulations to the Women's Federation for Peace in Asia for its rapid growth in the five years since its inauguration to the point that you are now able to host this splendid rally. In little more than 40 years since you emerged, from the ruins of a devastating war, your nation, Japan, has accomplished the greatest economic turnaround in the world. This feat, which may well be termed a miracle of modern times, is now the envy of people throughout the world. More laudable still is the fact that even while achieving such amazing industrial developments, Japan has endeavored to sustain the traditional values particular to the East and has shown a great commitment and efforts in family and social education. Underlying such wonderful success in the efforts you women have made as kind and self-sacrificing mothers and devoted wives, it is you, more than anyone else, 
who made your families healthy and strong while you nurture and watched over them. Since it is your work as a as woman that stands as the basis of this success, I, as a woman, also feel proud. Leaders of the Women's Federation for Peace in Asia, the world is now on the brink of a great historical transition period. The wartime policies of co communism caused bloodshed, ravaging millions of human beings. In the 70 years since the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Revolution of 1918, Communism came to rule more than half of the world, plunging all humanity into the pits of fear and anguish. New leaders finally have lowered that red flag, and we are watching it disappear into the midst of history. This shows that the worldview based on atheism, with state policies that deny God, has come to ruin. The philosophy of conflict, struggle, and hatred has revealed its limits and the one-party dictatorial, dictor, dictatorial structure of communism is now facing its own demise. However, this event leads to an important realization. The downfall of communism does not mean the victory of the free democratic world. Just as communism, which asserted economic equality, was brought to its end by the collapse of its own economy, Society in the free democratic world, which is crying out to the ideal of freedom, is also on the verge of a breakdown due to extreme confusion regarding values. Corruption, sexual immorality, violence, and addiction are multiplying under the shadow of so-called freedom. They are causing the dissolution of that free society. The Cold War era that lasted for more than 40 years after the Second World War is coming to an end. It was a great game with losers on both sides and no victory. This makes us realize that now is the time for a new salvation to reach both the communist world and the free democratic world. Capitalism and communism originated from the West, and we were based on material values. They have revealed their limited ability to satisfy the true desires of human beings who have both a spirit and a physical body. We are living in an age when it has become absolutely necessary for Eastern society, with its emphasis on spiritual values, to play a central role. Historically, the Asian continent has served as the cradle of spiritual civilization, and the time has finally arrived for the East to fulfill its global mission as the prime mover of spirituality. That is why this age has come to be called the Asia-Pacific era and why it is another great historic transition period. Most respected women leaders, I believe that this society was able to do an excellent job of protecting its historical values during the past half century. While Japanese industry developed and the nation became economically affluent, women voluntarily declined the opportunity for special treatment. Instead, they protected their families with devotion and sacrifice. In truth, the most important of all traditional values are the values centered on the family. There is an old saying to the effect, when one's family is harmonious, all goes well. What this means is that the family is the basis of peace, and the most important factor in forming such a family is true love. The world love has various meanings. However, I'm speaking here about true love, which refers to the absolute love centered on God. In other words, true love is to love even someone who seems impossible to love. And thus, in true love, you have no choice except to love even your enemies. Furthermore, true love is a sacrificial love of even giving one's own life for others. Therefore, in true love, antagonisms and conflicts among individuals and among societies or nations are completely transcended and dispersed. With true love, we can achieve true peace. True love is the motive and power behind creation, reproduction and development. To put it another way, physical energy, once it is invested, is consumed and finished. In the case of true love, however, the more you invest, the greater it grows, and it comes back to you with even more than you gave. 
Only in true love can the idea of eternal life become a reality. Families and societies that practice true love never come to ruin. They continue to grow. In this regard, the teaching of my husband, the Reverend Sun Moon Moon, to live for the sake of others is the basic guiding principle in the construction of a peaceful world. The origin of such true love is God, and God created humankind to realize this true love. When God created human beings, why did God create them as man and woman, each to become the object partner of the other? It was because true love. It was so that in the midst of that true love, the husband could share love with his wife and the wife with her husband. When the husband and wife share horizontal love with each other in this way, they come to possess the love of God, the origin of husband and wife. Simply put, through the horizontal love between a man and a woman, human beings can form the connection of love with God vertically. To put it another way, a man and a woman marry rooted in true love, in order to possess each other's world horizontally and to possess God's love vertically. They own the creator and all created things because true love brings the right of inheritance. Human beings attain their original, original desires through the horizontal connection with each other and the vertical connection with God. Based on this viewpoint, only man and woman together can encounter God's love. Man and woman have equal value in that they possess God's love only as a married couple that is united as one body. They stand in the position of the object partner of God's true love. Human beings and the Creator thus come to have equal value centering on true love. If the first created man and woman had fulfilled love in this way, they would have become the true parents and the starting point for the realization of God's love. Unfortunately, however, humanity's first parents never became true parents who were supposed to stand in the place of God as a substantial embodiment of true love. Still, the ideal of true parents has to be realized and the origin prepared through which true families, societies, nations, and the world centered on true love can be accomplished. Therefore, beyond simply the age of a global village where we are, are geographically close, the future world must usher in the age of the global family, where we are bound together centered on true love. Reverend Sun Moon Moon has lived not for his own sake, he has lived for the sake of God and humanity, because he knows the absolute way of true love. In spite of all the persecution and hardship he endured, he ultimately laid the worldwide foundation of today's Unification Church. As the wife of the man carrying out such a global task, because I am connected to this victorious foundation centered on true love, I share the pain of the head of the family together with all of my family members, engraving it even within my bone marrow. Furthermore, no matter what hardships I faced, I did my best not to give in to them and to keep a smile on my face, thinking of my husband who would feel alone without me. My life goals naturally came to be centered on true love. I live for the sake of others in my efforts to find true happiness through the woman's role in the love for parents, the love for husbands, the love for children. My life became one of living more for others today than I did yesterday, and more tomorrow than today, being more grateful and making more effort each day. Furthermore, I believe the reason I can successfully fulfill my role as a mother and raise my 13 children well is that my entire family is united, centered on God's true love. This is because in any given family, when God is within them, with them, the parents and the children can share the love, life, and hope of God. Distinguished leaders of the Women's Federation for Peace in Asia, the coming era is to be neither the age of conflict defined by two nations, the United States and the Soviet Union, nor the age of the confusion of many nations. Instead, it must be the age of God's world centered on God's love. 
this era of dominating the world based on the survival of the fittest in terms of economic power or military power must pass. Now we need to realize one world based on Godism. Godism teaches us about the true, about the true love of God through which the East and West, North and South, and all cultures, races, and philosophies can be melted into one. Godism has to start in Asia and construct the realm of the Asia-Pacific civilization. Such things as antagonism, conflict, or struggle will disappear from Asia when it is centered on Godism. Asians need to, be, need to set an example of how to achieve world peace through practicing true love by living more for the sake of the whole than for, for themselves. Because Japan has received the blessing of riches from the world, it ought to follow a path based on the spirit of true love, of living for the world. By regarding the, the pain of the world as their own pain, and the problems of the world as their own problems, the Japanese people will live for the world in self-sacrifice and service, and they will become leading figures in establishing world peace. Reverend Sun Moon Moon established the Interreligious Federation for World Peace and the Federation for World Peace on August 27 and 28 of 1991 in Seoul, Korea. Despite the fact that all religions on earth have the mission of bringing humanity together, centering on the one God and uniting humanity through true love, the truth is that in the course of history, they have split into hundreds, even thousands of sects. They have been engaged in conflicts and struggles among themselves, and they also have confused human beings about the path of faith that leads toward the true God. In view of the historical facts that innocent people have been accused in the name of religion and that bloody wars have broken out in the name of God, we realize that if religions cannot unite, the world representing the internal aspect of humanity cannot, ex cannot become one. A peaceful world on earth will grow more and more distant. In light of this, the fact that organizations bringing together world religions have been inaugurated this year is a grand historic undertaking. In addition, the fact of the matter is that the League of Nations and the United Nations, which were formed to resolve the problems that arose after the First and Second World Wars, have been inadequate. There remain many serious problems that have not been addressed in the past 40 years of the era of the Cold War, which can be said to have been the Third World War. Matters such as the resolution of racial, racial and cultural conflicts, closing the severe gap between the rich and the poor, the con conservation of nature and the establishment of true ethical values are the challenges that need to be newly tackled and resolved on a global scale in this present age. Based on this viewpoint, the founding of a new international organization called the Federation for World Peace, focused on the new philosophy of Godism and true love, brings forth substantial new opportunities. Taking it a step further, the Interreligious Federation for World Peace and the Federation for World and the Federation for World Peace, which represent the mind and body of humankind, have embraced the common goal of world peace and together have built a mutual foundation upon which they can cooperate with one another, suggesting the imminent construction of world peace. Reverend Sun Min Moon has already prepared in the environment of the real world all of the important preconditions for world peace. Most esteemed women representatives of Japan, now the time has come for you to be the people who practice true love by living for the sake of Asia and the world. Today, we are ushering in a great historic transition. It will emerge as an important opportunity for Japan and Asia to play an active role in the world. I hope that you will be broadened, you will broaden your consciousness and way of life so that Japan will stand clearly as the mother of Asia. 
and the mother of the world, and thereby stand at the forefront of constructing a new Asia and new world. This is the destined mission that history has placed in your hands to fulfill today. When Asia embraces the true love of God, the future of Asia is boundlessly bright. Furthermore, this world promises a future of hope in which the eternal order of peace can be firmly established. I pray that you will devote yourselves earnestly for peace in the new Asia and for the world, future world, future of the world. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, this was a longer speech, but to mothers, audiences, you know, the people of Asia, Japan, um, and I think she first touched upon the role of women and how women play a role of nurturing the children, raising the children. Um, and then she goes on about talking about true love. And true love is starts from a man and a woman. God created both man and woman. And true love starts within the family, through this love between this man and, man and woman, centered on God. And the two becoming one, is a representation of God in the family, God in within the family, within the couple. God can become one through them. And God's love can transcend this family, this the meaning of this horizontal plane between man and woman. That's where God can reside. Um, this intersection of vertical and horizontal. God can come down in that couple. And come down in that family. And through that, this love, this true love, can transcend the family into the community, the tribe, the nation, the world. And later she talks on about how Father Moon taught about living for the sake of others. So this true love that we create within the family is so that we can live a life for a greater sake, for the sake of those around us, for the sake of others. And through living for the sake of others, this love can go beyond just the family. Yeah, and I think another point in the reading, Shimonar talked about hardships and difficulty. And she mentioned about how, yeah, I can see and understand her unity and connection with her father, uh, her husband, and how she mentioned that um, she connected with father in this mission that he carried. And to alongside him to live for a greater sake, to live for the sake of others, um, towards God's mission, and letting um, Father Moon know, to Father know that he was not alone in this in this path towards creating a world centered on God. And I think that's the beauty that I see in their connection as a couple, that they really, together, two becoming one, as one being, that God can reside, they together walk the path to fulfill God's will. And I think, yeah, that's something really beautiful about their relationship. And I will continue to even look towards them to see how can I um, develop that within myself in regards in my own relationship with my spouse and create a relationship where God can really be the center no matter how, what difficulties come, hardships come, that they can see this bigger picture together. Oh. Yes, thank you.
We'll go to our song before our representative prayer. So everyone can please rise to your feet. Those on Zoom can also rise as well and worship together.
Thank you so much again that we are living in the time of our true parents. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Lord, we want to feel the value of us living in this moment. The value of living with the Messiah. We see Father going in the spirit world. He gave us education so many, many years, Father God. And today we stay with our true mother, the representative of the Holy Spirit, the only begotten daughter, your true daughter, beloved and parents. And then when we look, your children, Father God, true father, true mother, we can see all your attributes, the attribute of love. And then you, we can see your invisible presence through them, through their action, through the way they give the love, through the, their passion, perseverance, embracing, and taking responsibility to carry the burden like you, you carry the burden for 6,000 years. Beloved yes. parents, we look at them in all the pictures, they're smiling like they are not suffering, but they are carrying the burden of all humanity. Beloved heavenly parents, we, we learn every day, looking at our true mother. She's giving us everything, not only the teaching, but living by example. We can see everything, even all the things she endured, all the suffering. It's a good thing our true mother is not going to Father God. She gets persecution, she gets rejected, she, she, she experiences everything we live in today. She's getting challenged with her own biology, bio, biologic children. Beloved many parents, she accepted Father and then supported Father from her young age until today. And then she still keep going. She never changed destination. She don't vaccine. She still just connecting with you. Beloved many parents, we want to connect with you like that. We want to live the life like our children. We want to learn to forgive and forgive and keep going with you for that long. We want to continue to smile and then hide our our sadness for the sake of love of people around us, that we can give them joy. Beloved many fathers, so many things we can get through our true mother. And give us, we want to have this heart of patience, perseverance, 
the heart beloved very parents who can always impress beyond ourselves because the love and the sacrifice of our true mother is so something beyond so huge sometimes we cannot understand and then we we want to have this experience every day. We want to keep this focus. Think to our lives there are our true parents. Think to the life of our true mother, how she handles the situation, how she connects with you. And the beloved very parents, we want to connect with you the same way. Until you, you can feel happy. We want to give you this happiness, like our true parents give you their happiness. We want to find this way, you know, very, very parents, to take your burden like our true parents take the burden. You know, very, very parents, in the small dimension of our life, we want to clean up ourselves, you know, very, very parents. We want to clean up the history of the past. We want to clean up our shadow, even the shadow of our fallen nature, you know, very, very parents. We want to you know, be parents to be free ourselves. That we can be free. That's why our true parents, true father, true mother, was always free. They can dance, they can cry, they can jump because their heart is free. And we want beloved many parents to inherit this freedom of heart, the freedom of love, the freedom of forgiveness, the forgiveness of embracing, the forgiveness of forgetting ourselves for the sake of other. The the beloved many parents, thank you so much that we have all these things around us. Thank you, beloved many parents, that our true mother is trying to make everything easy for us that we can break through. Through the ancestral liberation, through the liberation of central evil spirit, beloved many parents, all the gardens will be receiving everything. Look, even every week we have Wednesday and Friday, we can have answers that we can separate ourselves with the negative influence of bad spirit. Because we want to become responsible. Our true parents, true mother, every day is talking to us to take responsibility. When she gives speech, outside people, to us, we know the divine principle. She says the same thing, but we are the central people who understand and that we need to take more responsibility for their God. Precious Father, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. And then we pray today that our pastor, Pastor Diane, Pastor Ilya, Raymond, Johnny, Sunmi Mulenga, Harmony, all of them with many other seven generation traveling to Korea from Georgia. Yes. And then we know many of them, even among America, they are starting to travel one by one. And all the many parents, I want that the presence of those people in Korea can open more their heart of joy for our two mothers. We know that mother cry every day. At this time, she can cry the tea of joy. The day of gratitude that she can look the job she's doing today that is working. That your children will be revived, beloved and parents, through America in every state. Beloved and parents, we pray that all those children they will come, they will bring a, a revival, the, the, the deep life for for other dead people and they bring through all the blessings coming from our true parents. The Lord of the parents gave them deep experience for each all of them, all the seven generations, that they can feel something different in their life. And that this will be the way they will come back to influence many other their children. The Lord of the parents give them the level of the standard of our community can change. Not only our community, but the different community in the church here in America. I pray for the Heavenly Doctrine. Thank you so much for his heart. The effort is making to organize the Blue Dragon 
the different workshops, beloved in Paris, to share the heart of our family for every each single member. Beloved in Paris, we want to get this opportunity. And then we want to be loved in Paris to go so deeply in our hearts that we can start to feel you. We can start to, to, to impress you in our hearts, beloved in Paris. That you can become the center of everything we do. Look at the center of our thinking. In the sense that even our cannot have even one single yota of negative thing. For everything we want to call you to be the center. Beloved very parents, Father God. Thank you again today. I pray for all the ministers from America. Who are going to Korea today? That this time, all those ministers will come in with a new fire that they can stand and influence many of the ministers for their God. If it's the political people, they will work in the era of politics to influence people. You know, many parents, for those who are coming around the world for the different country, doesn't matter how is the situation of their country. Use all those people who will represent in Korea to bring new fire. And that this fire will burn around the world, everywhere, in every country, beloved of the world. And then in the same way, we want to feel it here in Georgia, beloved of the that this community will be transformed. Everything will change. You know, the very parents that our heart can start to grow individually by overcoming. Because this was the strategy of mothers, just keep overcoming. Yes. Keep overcoming and calling you to come. Yes. You know, the very parents, we want to learn how to try to try to overcome. Yes. Even the most difficult challenges in our heart. We want to liberate ourselves. Yes. That we can be free all the time, Lord of the Paris. We want life to be free every moment. Yes. We want to be free, Lord of the Paris. That our eyes can be free. Yes. Our mouth can be free. Our nose can be free. Our ears can be free. All our entire being we want to be free, Lord of the Paris. Father God, thank you so much. Then you guide us and then we want to prepare our heart today. When, when the pastor is uh, not here, we still preparing for the blue dragon. And then we pray that this fire will come with people coming to Korea, with blue dragon here in Georgia. We want to get this fire forever. That we can break through. We can break through all the challenges. We know, Father God, even the challenge through our children, the second generation, that they can forget all the bad experience they have. This is no forget for us. Touch their heart. You will touch their heart. Everybody will feel your love. They will feel the love. And the power of the Holy Spirit will work in all of them every moment. Thank you, beloved Paris. Thank you. Beloved Paris, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You see so many tears. Sometimes we tear for ourselves. But through parents, through Father, Jesus, they drop the tear most of the time for you and the suffering of humanity. We want to change the love of even parents. Even the motivation of our tear, the motivation of our concern, that everything can connect with your desire. Thank you so much, beloved even parents. We pray in this moment that in Georgia we, we can have now the representative of the seventh generation yes. people, beloved Ben Paris, starting by Pastor Diane and Pastor Ilya. Beloved Ben Paris, we have now Nami and Yachan. Your son is going to Korea. Beloved Ben Paris, many more second generation will come and get blessing that this community will have the foundation of seven generations. Let's come from the other companies to inspire, to multiply, that the church will give more hope. And then you will see this joy in the other companies. 
Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you for all those that joined here at the Chunchu Moon. So don't forget that the Blue Dragon Tour is coming to Atlanta May 17th through 19th. Registration will email soon, so please keep those dates free and available so that you can come in person. And thank you everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.